What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm uh, going to try and do another quick and informative video for you here today. Okay, so just before the video goes any further, I just want to say that if you haven't already, please do click the subscribe button and hit that thumbs up button. Uh, especially if this video helped you out. I just want to mention it now before we get started, so I don't have to bore you with it later and we can get straight on with the video. But please do hit that button. It really helps me out and we're trying to get to 200 subscribers and we are nearly there. So thank you and enjoy the rest of the video. So we've got a Mercedes... Uh, W203 engine code, it'll work for the coupes as well and other uh, you know models around that year. This is a C220 CDI, it's the 148 brake horsepower. It's the, I believe the engine code is OM646. I'll put that up in the, uh, up in the top right corner. Can I, can I find the right, up top right corner? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I believe it's this. So basically what we're doing is working on the EGR. So issues you might have. You might just want to check it out to make sure it's operating normal. Um, it's not a complex procedure, it doesn't cause any engine lights or anything like that, so you can just check it out and have a look. Uh, do some preventative maintenance, perhaps. Alternatively, um, what you might have is you might have an engine code thrown. Um, last time when I did this, I, I just want to, I'm just doing some preventative maintenance, I want to make sure it hasn't blocked up again. What I had was, about a year ago, my fiance was driving this, and uh, she had a black box at the time. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, only insurance that would sort her out. Uh, weirdly, it's fine now, but yeah, so uh, with that there was a, a it was plugged in via the OBD port and it actually flashed up to a phone to the RAC app saying that there was uh, an EGR code and then occasionally it'd go into like a limp mode, uh, it just wouldn't boost properly, the revs would fluctuate when you were on, uh, say if you were sat at 70 on the on the dual carriageway or the motorway, it'd just, the revs would just fluctuate a bit and it'd, it'd jerk a bit. So we thought, let's have a look. If we've got an EGR code, we know it's that. Let's whip it out, have a look. And we ended up just cleaning it, taking it apart, cleaning it, and uh, it, it fixed the issue. So it, it was quite simple, didn't cost us anything. I'm going to show you where the EGR is, how to remove it, and then what you can do when you're there. So on these mechs, what you want to do is, really good thing is, you can put the bonnet into service mode, and it puts it directly up. <laughs> so it gives you way more access, which is really good, one of the best things about these Mercs. Okay, next all you want to do is just take the engine cover off. This is one of the ones where it just lifts off, it's on those captive sort of tabs. So just lift it off and move it out of the way. Let me bring you in. If you're looking at the engine like this, the EGR is top right. So it's literally, it's it's this. So there is two, uh, those star bits. There, and there, an electrical connector, and uh, then it lifts out and you can basically clean it. So now what I originally did was I took those bolts out and tried moving it and it's like almost welded on there you know with carbon deposits and heat. So I'll show you a little trick that you can do to actually get it out a bit easier. Sounds sketchy but it's not that bad. So all you want to do is loosen those up, you know just loosen them and, and move them out, back them out about you know an inch or so and then turn the car on and give it a little rev and I know it sounds sketchy but the bolts will catch it it's not going to fly anywhere it won't damage anything but it just allows it to break that seal and just pulls it out a little bit and then it's free and then you can just move it out by hand so let's do that okay so I've got an E11 bit here okay so I backed it out a little bit but it's still welded on there so I'll back, I'll back these out a little bit more what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start the car and give it a rev ok and hopefully that will be enough to free it up so I'll take these out the rest of the way and we'll have a look There we go, nice and loose now. So I'll remove the electrical connector. Put it somewhere safe. And wiggle it is the easiest way to do it. There we go. And it's still a bit awkward to get out, but <laughs> it's a lot better. Probably a good idea that I'll whip this off to be honest and have a look. So it's just that's just normal carbon deposits. But if you can see, um, basically it's like a valve, well, well it's an EGR valve, but what should happen is um, this should be able to open up, so that comes out, 
that way um, and let stuff through here basically uh, for the purpose of recirculating the exhaust gas. So the way you could check it is you could put like a long needle nose flathead, uh, needle nose plies in there, hold it tight on the stalk, the upper thin bit of the stalk and try and open it. So you, you don't push through that way, it opens out this way. So all you want to do is clean this up. Okay, what you want ideally is something that's petroleum based, so I've used carb cleaner in the past. Last time I did this, I was actually, we were kind of stuck, I was out in the middle, we used to live out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, I needed it sorted, and I used some barbecue cleaner. <laughs> and it worked really well actually, it proper stripped that uh, carbonization off, which you'd expect. At the minute, I'm just going to use some Easy Start, because that's all I've got to hand. Uh, at the minute, I thought I had some carb cleaner somewhere, but I don't. What I've also got is an old toothbrush. Pick these up, well, say old, I don't use that, obviously. Not that I don't use it. Uh, <laughs> you can pick these up from any supermarket, you pick a two pack up for like 20p, just just grab some of these. I always have some of these handy, they're just really good for little jobs like this. So you're going to want to basically just spray your cleaner all over. You can see, I can see carbon coming off already, but uh, basically spray it on, work it in. See the carbon starting to come off. It's easy starting the best because it evaporates quite quickly, but you know, it's not too bad. Better than uh, better than nothing, I'll tell you that. You could even let this soak in something for a while as well if you wanted. Um, so let's let it soak for a minute. We'll come back to it and clean it up in a sec. Two hours later. Okay, so you can be a bit more aggressive. Um, this is a lot cleaner than it looks on the camera. Um, but again, I know it works. I ain't got any of the symptoms that I described to you guys. So I know it's working. Uh, I've just cleaned it up and just sort of got the worst of it off. So what you can do is you can go more ham if you want on it and get it as clean as possible. Just don't use anything that's going to leave any residue. Make sure you use something that's going to evaporate off. Um, and you can be fairly aggressive with this as long as you don't damage this o-ring around here where it seals. Um, you should be okay because it's just a mechanical valve, there's nothing electronic here. Just keep everything away from this end. So, to verify its operation, I'm just going to get some pliers in there. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it that much on camera, um, but I can lever this up and I can see that the valve's opening. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, like, it's a bit of a weird angle, you've kind of got to get to see it, but you can see daylight through it. And uh, it's not going to open massively, it's not like a thermostat or anything like a normal valve that you expect where it opens up like a huge amount, it doesn't dip in, it just opens enough to let stuff come in through here uh, and be recirculated. So I can verify that that's moving fine. The system's going to exert a lot more pressure on it than that. So I know it's working. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that back in the car now. Might have to wiggle it to get it in, but then you're going to draw it in with the bolts, so. Reconnect the EGR valve connector. And then you're good. And then you're free to just put your edge cover back on. And that's job done so thanks for watching that if that helped you out um, let me know down in the comments below uh, if you want to see anything in more detail or more explained do let me know otherwise please hit subscribe if it did help you out and thanks for watching see you guys in the next one